Yo, welcome back. All right, here we are. Um, we're back. We are back at it. Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, um, you know, today what we're going to do, we're going to be reviewing uh, just some stuff that we reviewed before our little spring break here. Okay, and that's it. It's just four questions today. And then we will be done. Um, you'll have, and then there'll be an exit slip as well. But that, I explained that all in the other video. All right. Um, all right. So today our song of the day was Blue Stay Away From Me by the band. Great song. Also a great band if you haven't heard of them or, or listened to one of them yet. They are, yes, their name is The Band. Okay. They actually, uh, Martin Scorsese did a documentary called The Last Waltz. Um, it was their last concert. Uh, and it was... It's a very famous documentary. It's a DVD. I recommend taking a look at it if you're a fan of that type of music. Um, it's a little bit of history. It has it doesn't have necessarily the history of them, but it, you know it talks about uh, a lot about. Uh, um, it has a lot of different guys come in and play. You know, um, like Bob Dylan's on there. Neil Young is on there. Uh, Muddy Waters. Not sure if you know who that is, but there's a lot of old time musicians on there. Um, you know, Doctor John. Uh, that and it's really interesting it's pretty good i would highly recommend it um if you know i don't know where you can find it i don't know if it's streamable or not but i'm I'm sure you guys are pretty good at tech so you could probably figure it out all right having said that i've wasted two minutes of our time now um so why don't we get started okay so we're reviewing some factor and factor uh solved by factor remember we, we've been doing you've been doing this forever all right, I need to make sure that my equation here, my expression is equal to zero in order to solve, which means I have to move everything to the same side as my square term. So I'm going to add the 30 and the 11x to get x squared plus 11x plus 30 equals zero. And now remember, we want to find two numbers that multiply to 30 um, and then add to 11. Well, the factors of 30 are 1 and 30, 2 and 15, and 5 and 6. Luckily, 5 and 6 will add to 11 if they're both positive. And then this step you might be, you probably will do in your head. I'm going to write it out anyway for those of us that need it. Okay. Um, X plus 5 equals 0. X plus 6 equals 0. Move the 5 over so I get X equals negative 5 and X equals negative 6. Okay. That's it. Problem number one in the books. Wow, that was fast. Holy buckets. Here we go. Buckets are back. Um, we are back. How about it? So I'm going to add the 9a over, add the 9a over. So I have 2a squared, whoa, plus 9a. Wow, this is an exhilarating minus 18. Here I am on a Sunday making this video. Hey, now, I'm in my Sunday best, too. I got my grout fit on. All right. Um, just getting ready to go. Anyway, um, <clears throat> again, the first question you should always ask yourself when you are factoring, is there a greatest common factor? Um, unfortunately for us, there is not a greatest common factor here. Okay, so that means I'm going to have to uh, split the middle term. All right, remember splitting the middle term, I do the first number times the last. All right, 2 times 18, and I, or excuse me, negative 18, I get negative 36. I want to figure out the factors of 36 that will add to give me 9 here. Okay, well, I know that's 1 and 36, um, 2 and um, 18. 3 and 12. Oh, oh boy. All right. Well, I know it's got to be 3 and 12. All right. And I know that um, the 9 has to be positive, which means the bigger number has to be positive. So I have to make that 3 negative because I have to multiply a negative 36. So again, the reason it's called split the middle term is because I'm going to take this middle term and split it. Split it into negative 3a plus 12a and then minus... The minus 18 comes down for the ride, equals 0, and the 2a squared comes down for the ride as well. Okay, remember, what, that's a 12, by the way. It looks really bad. I'll rewrite it for you. Don't you worry, I got you. Um, that's a little better. 
12, 8. All right, remember now when we have four terms, four terms, one, two, three, four, count it out. Wow, holy buckets, let's have some fun. That means we have to factor by grouping. So I'm going to group the first two terms. Okay, I'm going to group the second two terms. Remember, we want to figure out the greatest common factor between 2a squared and 3a. Holy buckets, all it is is a. That was easy. Okay, so then left over inside is 2a minus 3. All right, GCF between 12A and 18. Um, hmm, greatest common factor, I think, is positive 6. What do you think? Do you think so, too? Oh, oh, I'm dropping the stylus. Do you think so, too? Okay, good. Um, I can't lose this because if I break it, like, I'm done for. I have to use my finger, and nothing will make sense. All right, so I take the 6 out. I get 2A minus 3 again, and that equals 0 comes down for the ride. Now look, our two parentheses match. That's a good thing. So our two factors are a plus 6 and 2a minus 3. Again, that's equal to 0. I have to solve. All right. This I should get a equals negative 6. This one, some people may struggle to do this in their head, so I'll write out the steps. 2a equals 3. A equals 3 over 2. There we go. All right. Two more. I'm going to pause for a second here. All right. My phone's going off here. Not really. I just need to pause. And we're back. So here on this one, we're going to solve by completing the square. All right. Remember to complete the square, I need to move, I need to move my C to the other side. So I'm going to add 37. So I get M squared minus 4M. Plus, remember we're doing now, now we have to do the plus blank, equals 44 plus blank. Okay? Uh, remember to find our blank term. I take negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2, and then square it, which is 4. And that goes in here. Okay? From there, I want to complete my square. All right, I want to factor this down. So this becomes m minus 2, remember it's minus 2, whoops, minus 2 squared equals 48. Remember why this is negative 2? Well, because this right here is negative 2, all right? They go hand in hand, okay? Now, this is where we kind of stopped um, when we were doing vertex form, but remember to solve now, we're wanting to solve, so I need to get rid of the squared. So to get rid of a square term, I take the square root of both sides, these these drop out, I get m minus 2 equals square root plus or minus 48. Now, 48 can simplify. I can simplify that radical, all right? Um, and I'm going to want to do that, all right? But I'm going to do that at the end. I'm just going to add 2 to the other side. Add 2 so I can get m by itself. So I have 2 plus or minus root 48. Now I want to simplify this radical, all right? I want to see... What perfect square multiplies into 48? Well, 4 does, but it's not the largest one. All right, the largest perfect square is 16. So I can do 16 and 3 to get 2 plus or minus, where the square root of 16 is 4, and the root 3 comes down, and that's your answer. And you can just leave it like that. You don't actually have to find the numeric answer. You get a decimal. All right, I just want you to leave your answers like that, okay? Um, next one, holy buckets, everyone's favorite. I don't play favorites, but you guys might. Um, we're about to solve by using the quadratic formula. Okay. Um, wow. Remember the quadratic formula? I'm just going to write it down here just so you remember. Negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All right. In order to use the quadratic formula, I need to be in standard form, which means there needs to be a zero here. So I need to move that 48 to the other side. Now this, this, this is brutal that this is a 48. It's gonna cause for a big number, but that's okay. That's okay. We're smart. We can make it, we can do it. Here we go. So, I mean, also just before I get going on this, I could choose to uh, split the middle term Okay, but I don't know that it's going to factor nicely. All right, so I want to use the quadratic formula. All right, so I know that A is 3, B is 10, C is 
negative 48. So x equals the opposite of b, so negative 10, plus or minus the square root, this is going to be hard to write, 10 squared minus 4a, oh, can I, oh, buckets, couldn't, did not going to happen, all right, here we go. Let's move it over, move that over, okay, whoops, okay, one more try here, minus 48, wow, that's a 48, okay, all over 2A, alright, I want you to pause the video here and I want you to try to simplify this yourself, okay, and then check your work when you are done, alright, so, um, I got 676 underneath the square root, all right, underneath my radical here. All right, luckily for us, 676 squared 676 is 26. So this, this part trips some people up, so that's why I paused it or came back here. All right, so I have to do, I have to actually solve this out. If this is a number, this is an actual number, a constant, like a 4. If there, if there is a square root, then I actually have to solve it, which means I have to do this twice. I have to do negative 10 plus 26 and divide by 6, and I have to do negative 10 minus 26 and then divide by six and get two answers okay um from there we're good you know what i mean um negative 10 plus 26 so that's 16 16 over 6 which is 8 over 3. negative 10 minus 26 is negative 36 negative 36 divided by 6 is negative 6. So there we go there's our answers. All right. All right. That is it for the review. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Okay. Um, have a great rest of your day.